So I'm here with Mrs. Callis, who's agreed to talk to us about uh, brain plasticity through her personal story. Um, can you tell us what you do here at ISB? My name is Barbara Callis, and I teach English as an additional language and English 9. And can you tell us what happened to you last year? Last year I was at school when I suddenly felt like my head was in a vice and it sort of got tighter and tighter and tighter and it felt like my head was going to explode so I called for help and the school nurse came and luckily they were having an IASIS um, tournament here so there was an ambulance on the field so the ambulance came in and brought me to the hospital and they determined that I did have a stroke and by then I was unconscious and uh, they said I needed surgery immediately so they operated. I had a, a, a leak. One of the blood vessels in my brain was leaking. And it was bleeding so that it formed a gigantic blood clot. And then that blood clot stopped the flow of blood through my brain. And, um, and actually, when they took me to the hospital, I had stopped breathing. And one of the teacher's husbands, <laughs> Moon's husband, the Chinese teacher, came and um, he resuscitated me and took me to the hospital. Can you tell us what part of your brain was most affected? The most affected part, of there were two parts of my brain. One was the occipital lobe, and that part of your brain is responsible for vision. And the other part was the parietal lobe, and the parietal lobe is responsible for balance. Uh, what did the doctors um, say at the time? What did they expect you to be able to do and not do? They said that I wouldn't be able to walk very well, that I would be very clumsy, I'd fall over, bump into things. Um, I was in a wheelchair for a while. They said that I lost 50% of my vision on the right side and 50% of my vision on the, on, well really on the both right sides, right side of my left eye and right side of my right eye. So I could only see 50%. And um, so the research said that I would only be able to get back five more percent. When I got out of the hospital at first I couldn't see anything, all I could see was braille. Then I could start to see in panels and I could see one panel and then nothing, another panel and then nothing because remember 50 percent, right? And so then after a while, um, so then I could actually see that 50% as dizzy as I was, but then after a while the panels started going together, but they went together uh, like a ladder, so the panels didn't go together straight. So the things I saw would be like half up, half down, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like this. Right. Okay, and then one day, about two months later, my daughter was still here, and I said, oh, the ceiling's straight. So my mind closed up the holes, and then it also straightened everything out, and so things became straight, and then I could actually see something. You made a lot of progress in the end, and so you were very lucky with uh, your therapy and uh, all the rehab you had. Can you tell us a little bit what happened in terms of therapy and what kind of things you had to do to, to get better? I flew to Texas and I started therapy and I went to a place rehab center called TIER, which is very famous in America. It's in uh, Houston. So they had very elaborate machinery to help me. And so that was my physical therapy was the vestibular balance person who really worked on my balance so that even in any distracting situation, whether going up and down, things going around, that I wouldn't fall. And um, they had me doing things in that therapy, like walk with a tennis racket and the ball had to go around the rim while I was walking, or I had to look on one side of the room and then the other back and forth and read cards, numbers, you know, see what I see on each side and try to report. Um, they had obstacle course that I had to go around, so they had all different things for me to do, so not just walking, but really be able to balance up and down stairs. Um, then I had the visual therapist, and the visual therapist worked really hard on trying to uh, take away the vision I had Right, so I have good on the left side of each eye. They would cover that left side, and then I would have to do exercises with the right side that was blind. So they would cover the seeing spot and try and stimulate the blind spot. And they did that because they have a theory that the 
uh, if they can stimulate that, then the right side of the brain would take over from the left side of the brain. I did my therapy every day for about eight hours a day. Wow. And I had, <laughs> so yeah, so I did a lot of work. And so we're talking, that's only a few months ago, really. I came back here in March of last year, right? March of last year. And when I came back, then I was... Um, the left side, I had 100% vision on my left side, and the right side, I say it's 98. It depends on my day. Sometimes it's 100. But Your brain did a really good job repairing itself. My brain is very smart, yeah. I know. <laughs> my brain's smart, and I had a little bit of help because I was in a study. Mm -hmm. I was in actually two studies, but the one study that was most interesting was done by Baylor University in conjunction with another university in Germany. And they gave me a functional MRI, so they took a four-hour picture of my brain, and while they were taking a picture of my brain, I had to do different activities, and different parts of my brain would light up, so they would see where the parts of my brain lit up, and they could see what part wasn't functioning anymore, mm -hmm. presumably that occipital lobe. And then they created a program for me, and in the program um, only focuses on the part that doesn't work, right? So that, that you look at this dot, and then they have a red dot in the middle, I can see that. Then they have these little black dots, and they either go to the right swirl or to the left swirl. And then I'm supposed to push a button left or right. And first I couldn't see anything. They kept saying, push the button left or right. I'm like, I can't see it. Oh, good, good because they wanted to focus on the part where you can't see. They were happy they got the blind spot. But how am I supposed to know if it's left or right when I can't see anything? And they said, you just keep looking at it. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, over time I could begin to see some movement. At first I couldn't see the dots, but now I actually could see the dots going left and the dots going right. And so it did stimulate something. And their hypothesis as doctors is that it stimulates the right side of the brain to take over the function of the left side that's defective. Finally, um, all this, all that happened to you and all the therapy, has it changed your mind on what the brain can do? And maybe is there something you want to say to people who haven't had a stroke? And, and what, what their brain is capable of and what are the implications? If you want to do something, if you have set a challenge for yourself, your brain can meet the challenge. So our, our, we are only limited by the goals that we set. If we set limited goals, our brains will only meet that challenge. It will be limited by that challenge. Because the way that we our brain works is that we set a challenge and then our brain finds a way to meet that challenge. And it, it takes time. So if at first we don't succeed, that's normal. You set a really hard challenge for yourself. But if you continue, then little by little, you'll find a pathway to be able to do that thing. The other part is that it takes a lot of people working together. So I think you can set a personal challenge, but I think it takes a group. And so it's important, I think, to accept help from other people, to ask for help, and find different ways of, of doing things. Because I thought I could do it by myself. And I found out that I couldn't make my brain work by itself, no matter what I thought. <laughs> I needed other people to help me and to work with me. So I think those are the two takeaways that I'd like to give, is set up a high challenge and work together with other people to meet your own challenges and to help them meet theirs. Well, thank you so much. That was really interesting and you answered all the questions I didn't have time to ask you, so <laughs> you're perfect. <laughs> I knew the questions, I just went on. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. <laughs> you did my job for me. Thank you so well, much. Well, thank you very thank much. You.